Welcome back to another Jenny TM video and we're going through some of the stuff that I picked up the other day and another item here is uh, well it's the new uh, livery on what is actually quite an old model if not the oldest more super detailed model that's in the Hornby range it's probably not the oldest but certainly uh, it came from a buyout of bits and pieces from Daypole and I think it's the only model that they bought the tools from Daypole that is still in production. And I know there's a lot of debate about these terriers that people whine that, well, they're not entirely accurate because they don't really represent any particular member of the class and they're neither an A1 or an A1X. Um, and, you know, by modern standards, some of the details are a bit coarse. But actually, I really like them. And um, in terms of the price bracket, this I paid £66 for. Uh, and that seems to be the going rate from a lot of the box shifters. Um, and that is actually really good value for what you get. I mean, a comparable locomotive, say something like the Midland 1F from Backman, would be a little bit more than that. But these come out in so many different colourful liveries. And uh, this is the first time I've seen it in uh, South Eastern and Chatham Railway. What we've got here is catalogue number R3467 SE and CR. Terrier number 751. Now this was actually originally, uh, the original locomotive was Wadden uh, when it was owned by the London Brighton and South Coast Railway and uh, in about 1900, oh, let's have a look, 1904 the locomotive was sold to the South Eastern and Chatham Railway to work on the Sheppey Light Railway Having been repainted into full Brunswick Green and renumbered 751, the engine was sent to the new Romney branch for testing prior to moving to Sheerness on May 24th, 1905. I've actually got a model of Wadden um, in the Burn Tumber livery. So technically it's the same locomotive. You couldn't put them side by side without them being weird in the eyes of the rivet counters. But hey, I don't care that. I just love this livery. So let's just slide it out. And this is in the newer style Hornby boxes. And I quite like these because you get the very colourful slip case. Quite a tight fit. And on the back you get a whole bit of detail about the, the class. Uh, originally built in 1870. Um, and uh, there actually there's quite a few survivors considering the age of the locomotives. Um, there's quite a few survivors and some of those survivors were ones which were sold out of service even by the London Brighton and South Coast Railway um, such as this one. I think Wadden is in the Canadian Railroad Museum. So the real locomotive still exists. Now I see here we've got a plastic insert inside the cardboard outer so we'll just prise all this out and we've got our, the usual instructions there with, uh, yeah, let's have a look. Yeah, it's pretty much the same as what's been coming for quite a few years uh, on this locomotive. Now, the locomotive itself is not DCC ready. Uh, it never was. And uh, unless Hornby do some serious retooling of the chassis, it never will be either. But for me, running on DC, that's not really a big problem. Now, let's just peel this open get the locomotive out. There's no additional bits that go with this. Uh, none at all. What you see is what you get. Everything is applied. Let's get the protective plastic off there. And one of the first things you can see is it's, it's got the older style fatter tension lock couplings, which they look pretty ugly to be honest, but it's quite an easy little um, mod to do, which is what I will probably end up doing with this to adapt uh, a Backman slimline tension lock couplings, the kind that they sell for uh, replacing the couplings on the 33-XXX series wagons um, and trimming them with a, a scalpel to be able to fit and screw down onto there. So it's an easy fix to make, I wouldn't worry too much about that. We've got all the brake rigging already applied. 
uh, and even even the vacuum hoses, everything is on there. And we've got all of the, um, I think that's a, like a condenser, again. I'm not sure what, what those are, but we've certainly got the handrails. They're a bit coarse by modern standards, but this is an old model. It goes back to, I think, Daple had it in their range, probably mid to early 1990s, something like that. So it predates a lot of the super detail era stuff. Um, so it really does hold its own, and I really quite like them. And it's one of the few of the older style Hornby locomotives, which I will happily actually still pick up. The livery application is really nicely done. It's pretty crisp. We've got the boiler bands. We've got the S, E and C R lettering across there. And we've got a bit of lining. It's actually, it looks quite subtle on this. I think it's trying to be much the similar livery as what was released on the uh, Backman uh, C-Class uh, when it first came out. There was a version which sold out incredibly quickly, but I did manage to get myself uh, one of. Um, I think it's that livery. Uh, it doesn't have the gold painted dome, but I don't know whether this locomotive ever would have. Um, but certainly this is probably going to end up living in my display cabinet next to that Backman locomotive. There are a few moulding seams. We've got one across the top of the boiler over the top of the back dome. But, you know, then again, these things have to be made somehow. And it's not really the most obvious. We have also got, I can see down there, we've got a nice gap through the running plate. And I don't know whether you can see my hand moving behind that. But you can see right down into the wheels in motion there which I think is quite nice. And we've got a nice open cab as well. We've got no motor protruding into there, which the uh, the ex Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway pug, fine though that model is in my opinion, is seriously let down by the fact that through entirely through lack of space, the motor is mounted into the cab. Not so in this. So completely clear for putting in a uh, crew if you wanted. Although you probably have to uh, search around for a locomotive crew suitable for the period that this is about 1904 through to maybe 1923, something like that. So you, you'd have to find um, a locomotive crew that fitted that period better. Again, we've got more lining on the running plate, uh, even on the uh, steps there. It's really nicely done and it's why I really like these pre-grouping liveried locomotives for the really colourful and attention to detail of the livery that they have. The buffers aren't sprung, but again, they never were. This is the locomotive pretty much as it was tooled by Daypole. It doesn't have a sprung center axle. Now that is something which um, it was pointed out to me uh, online a few days ago. Um, and it's something I hadn't really paid much attention to. And I don't know why that would be because the, certainly the original Daypole model had a sprung center axle. So I'm not entirely sure what Hornby have done to remove that. So it's probably not quite as sure-footed as its old Daypole predecessor. But that said, um, you know, these normally run pretty well. They're a bit sprightly. And they tend to go off like a wounded gazelle, uh, which is fairly common for older locomotives from all, three, all of the major... Uh, locomotive stables so it's not just a Hornby thing. Overall I'd give this, um, yeah I'd, go, I'd be pretty generous actually. I do like these terriers. I know it has a lot of niggly little faults but it looks like a terrier, it feels like a terrier and it gives a good excuse for Hornby to bang out an awful lot of very colourful pre-grouping liveries so notwithstanding the little flaws which any locomotive of this vintage is really to be expected to have I'd give it a good solid 8 out of 10 and you know I have a soft spot for these so maybe I'm biased but hey what the heck. Anyway I hope that's been really informative to you We've only been out a few days at the time of recording this, but it's well worth picking up. And as I said in the review, I know it is a much older model that has a lot of foibles, but certainly if you're looking for a very, very pretty Southeastern and Chatham Railway liveried locomotive, 
in the particular livery that will match that Backman C class that came out a couple of years ago and was very highly sought after, then look no further than this. And I always have a soft spot for Terriers. Don't forget to like this video, share it too, and go back through uh, all the other videos that we've got up. It's over 270 now and we've got trends going by and we've got other box openings and reviews. We've got me larking around and also we've got uh, some vinyl reviews. So a bit of something for everybody there. And oh, also mustn't forget that Boo! Ooh, hey, that is magic, that. Boo! I just want to tell you all about Zoe's channel and uh, she's been uh, video logging or blogging or whatever you, whatever the cool kids are calling it these days, uh, vlogging every single day and uh, there's some really interesting stuff there. She's uh, documenting her very, very good work that she does as a local councillor and I, I've been instructed under pain of being, being spanked to tell you that I'm in that vlog. You, anyway, you already know that if you've been there and watched it. And if you haven't been there and watched that, then well, you naughty, naughty person, you need to do that. And when you do do that, you will also notice that I'm in those videos too. So, yes, I'm telling them, Mother. I'm telling them. Anyway, you take very good care of yourself. And there's me, Jenny Kirk, saying, until next time, bye for now. And uh, we're going back through... Uh, <laughs>